Hello student friends. So far we have seen the different types of climatic factors like light, temperature, water, air and atmosphere. And also we have seen soil as an edapic factor. Now today we will be studying about the biotic factor. All living plants and animals living in an area form the biota of that region. Biotic component in an ecosystem works as a complex system of competition and cooperation, where the action of every life forms an effect on all the others. Thus, any living organism within an ecosystem can be considered as a biotic factor. Biotic factors such as the soil bacteria, plants, top predators and polluters can all profoundly shape which organism can live in an ecosystem and what survival strategies they use. Biotic factor together with non-living abiotic factors such as the temperature, sunlight, geography and chemistry determine what ecosystem looks like and what ecological niches are available. Types of biotic factor. Scientists have grouped the biota of a region into three major groups which determine their role in the flow of energy which all living things in an ecosystem need to survive. These groups are producers or autotrophs, consumers or heterotrophs and decomposers or detrivers. Producers. These are also called autotrophs. It is derived from the Greek word auto for self and troph for food. Thus, these organisms make their own food using inorganic inorganic materials and energy resources from the environment. Producers are extremely important. Without them, no life could have existed on planet Earth. The very first life form on Earth had to learn how to make fuel and building material to make more cells out of non-living material. This is because when the first life appeared on earth, there was no other, any other life form to feed on. So the first life form had to be a producer or an autotroph. Producers remain vital today as the life forms, which can harness inorganic energy to be used as a fuel for life. There are two major classes of producers. The first form is the photoautotroph. It is by far the most common type of producers on earth today. These producers harness energy from sunlight to power their life functions. Green plants, green algae, some bacteria are all photoautotrophs. Most photoautotrophs use a pigment such as chlorophyll to trap the energy present in the solar radiation and convert it into biological energy through a process called photosynthesis. They then package the energy into a form of food that all life forms can use and use it to create their proteins, sugars, lipids and more essential materials for life. Hence, in most of the ecosystems, plants are the producers and they form the bottom of the energy pyramid. All other organisms depend on energy the plants have harvested from the sun to survive. The second form of autotrophs are the chemoautotrophs. These are rare 
in most ecosystems. They obtain energy from chemicals such as hydrogen, iron and sulfur, which are not common in most environment. Nonetheless, they can still play an important role in the ecosystem because of their unusual biochemistry. For example, the methanogens, these are the organisms that make methane through a process called as chemoautotrophy. And this methane gas, which is a greenhouse gas, and it is much more powerful than carbon dioxide and plays a major role in regulating the Earth's temperature. Other chemoautotrophs can produce similarly powerful chemicals with their unique metabolism. Photoautotrophs are more common today, but that may simply be because sunlight is more plentiful than the chemical chemoautotrophs. Because chemoautotrophs use their energy resources from certain chemical components and they are usually found at extreme climatic conditions. Now, for example, here you can see this is a volcanic vent underwater and these are the bacteria which are obtaining energy from the chemical compound and synthesizing their own food. Now, this is another hot water spring where you can see the sulfur bacteria, the green sulfur bacteria who are using the chemical compounds. Means these are some of the examples which I have shown to make you aware that most of these chemoautotrophs are found in extreme climatic conditions. The second form of biotic component are the consumers. These are also called heterotrophs because these organisms eat other living organisms in order to obtain energy. Heterotroph, this word is derived from Greek. Hetero means others and troph means food. The herbivores that eat plants, carnivores that eat animals, and omnivores which eat both plants and animals are all heterotrophs. Heterotrophy probably evolved when some organisms discovered they could eat autotrophs as a source of energy instead of creating their own energy and organic material. Some autotrophs subsequently evolved symbiotic relationship with consumers like lichens. Some angiosperms plants they produce nectar to attract the insects which help them in pollination and most of the angiosperms they produce fruits to attract animals so that they help in the dispersal of seed and help in their propagation. In ecological pyramid consumers are grouped into three forms primary consumers, secondary consumers, and top consumers. Primary consumers. These are purely herbivore animals that are dependent for their food on producers or green plants. All these animals, some of the examples I have shown you in the slide, for example, insects, rodents, rabbit, deer, cow, buffalo, goat are some of the common herbivores in a terrestrial ecosystem. In aquatic ecosystem, crustaceans and mollusks are the herbivores. Elton named herbivores of ecosystem as key industry animals. 
the herbivores serve as a chief food source for carnivores. Secondary consumers. These are carnivores and omnivores animals. Carnivores are flesh-eating animals and omnivores are the animals that consume both the herbivores as well as plants. Examples of secondary consumers are sparrow, fox, crow, wolf, dog, cat, snake, etc. And in the slide, you can see large fishes. You can also see the elephant seal. You can see the otter. You can see the falcon. You can see the bear. All these are some of the examples of the secondary consumers. Tertiary consumers or the top consumer. These are the top carnivores which prey upon other carnivores, omnivores, and herbivores. The shark, the whale shark, the polar bear, lion, tiger, owl, the vultures, the hawk, and the barred eagle, these are all the organisms that can, that can be included in this tertiary consumers. The third biotic component are detritivores or decomposers. Decomposers or detritivores are organisms that use organic compound from producers and consumers as their source of energy. They are important to the ecosystem because they break down materials from other living organisms into simpler forms which can be used again by other organisms. Decomposers include soil bacteria, fungi, worms, flies, other organisms that break dead organic material or waste product from other life forms. They are distinct from consumers because consumers usually consume other organisms while they are still alive. Decomposers, on the other hand, metabolize waste products that might not be of interest to the consumers, such as rotting fruit and dead animals. Now here you can see some of the examples of these decomposers and detritivores, which are helping in recycling of nutrients in the ecosystem. And we should be thankful to the decomposers and detritivores because they are the ones which are actually cleaning the planet Earth. That is why they are mostly called as natural scavengers. They clean the Earth from the dead and decaying matter. Suppose this decomposers and detributes were not there. Then now, by now, the whole world would have been covered with the dead material of plants and animals, and we could not even witness the soil. So thanks to the decomposers and detritivores, because they are the ones which are cleaning all the dead materials and adding all that materials back into the soil. So they form the most important connecting link in the cyclic of the nutrients in an ecosystem. So my dear student friends, here we complete this topic on biota. So here we have studied what is biota. We have seen the different components of the biotic factors. We have seen the role each of these components play in an ecosystem and how 
the detrivores are helping in the recycling of the nutrients. So my dear students, please take care of your health, maintain social distance, wear mask whenever you go out of your house, use hand sanitizers and take care of your health and be safe. Thank you.